fit because it the problem could be in the bottom of my slot here um, it looks like this is angled so I'm going to straighten this out it also can create problems you got to watch out because if you undercut something and then you later have to fit it or plane it down a little that gap's going to show up <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, in general, undercutting, if you know where to undercut, um, you, can, you can eliminate that from your number of things, number of places where it might be rubbing, you know. Without affecting how it looks. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you, look, if you look at the back, you know, like, if you look in a room of paneling, that 18th century, those fancy paneled rooms, you know, everything's perfect. And if you take one of those panels off the wall and you look at the back, everything's back cut. Everything's back cut, so it just hits the front. The first time I took one apart, I went, wow, no wonder they did this stuff so fast. So I took some off here and there. That's better. It's still bottoming out somewhere. I have a feeling that my dado, my, my halfway mark is, is uh, not halfway. So I'll just uh, take a little off of that. I mean, what you can do, too, is you can put a clamp on here, like a hand screw clamp, give it a squeeze, see if that, if that does it. But I suspect that my little notch here is, is not... It doesn't take much. Yes, absolutely. Against your plywood, your layout, um, to make sure that... That's what happens is if sometimes when you do this, if one of these angles is a little off, it'll it'll change your X a little bit one way or the other, and you want to you want to check it against your against your drawing. That's that's almost down all the way. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Now this, the top of this has a slight arc to it, and what I would do, at least what I think I, I would do, is to do your joinery first, and then put the arc on it later. Because uh, it's a lot easier to mark this stuff out on a flat surface than a curved one, and you, you know you're not going to affect the joint at all. Is so. An arc that you put on it with a plane? Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, this is a little, little too curvy. Want something flatter? This says 16. Like that. Typical mahogany. Gonna lose in one direction. Ooh, I didn't save my X. I'll know one of them. That'll be helpful. Let's take a guess. Yeah, I think this is the way. Oh, it wouldn't even go with you. Well, it is now. <laughs> no, it, it, would, it would be really close the other way. So that's... A couple of people have asked me if I was going to talk about construction or assembly. So I'm going to, at this point, I want to put this table together um, with the stuff that I've got done so far. If I can remember how it goes together. What do we got here? There's number three on that corner. All right. Um, because I'm going to talk about making the, the gadruning, the piece that's going to be carved. And in order to do that, you have to have the table together. Three, three. That's handy. So, um, while you guys were gone last time, I cut these 
fly leafs um, like that, and those I just cut on the saw uh, with the blade, set at an angle, and then I made a. Uh, oh, I wonder where the other legs are. Oh, yeah. I just lead on the saw and um, just cut them on the table saw and then planed off the, the marks. So that's how those go. You don't want to make these so big that they stick out beyond your leaf. <laughs> so keep that in mind <laughs> when you put it together. Uh, okay, so this, I marked these. That looks like a... That one's either going to go here. Yep. That looks like C. Okay, good. B. Come on. C. That goes there. Okay, so these go in. As I said, you, you've got a little bit of uh, you've got a little bit of play in this, since these, the, you know, the good thing is that they are so, the dimensions are so thin that they do have some bend to them. Um, so you can put these in here. Uh, I think they should go in. So you, you've got a pound of glue going. <laughs> okay, and you just glued those. First, I mean, since I'm using high glue, I'd probably take a heat gun and warm up some of these joints and get them, get them warm. Um, I'd, I'd put this end on and pin it because this moves enough. So you can see, I, I just fit this in without taking it apart. So I, I glue this end together. Um, I glue this joint, and I slide this in. And what I did uh, to figure out the depth on these was, you know, I mortised them out to a certain depth, and then I, um, I marked that on my, on my drawing, and then I laid my piece on there, and I, I marked it about an eighth of an inch short, and I cut these all off. As I marked them sitting on the drawing so I know that they'll fit in. They won't bottom out. They won't prevent the table from going together. Right? Of course, you, you want to make a test run before you glue it, but um, I did that. And then I, I sort of custom planed the ends of these so they would slide into these mortises too. So, so to answer your question, I glued this up. I glued this up. Then I'd, I'd glue this end. I glued this together. And then I'd, I'd glue this together and this together. So push the ends on. Um, I mean, I suppose there's another order. I hadn't thought about how many different ways you could put this together, but uh, probably a few. Do you glue the end pieces to the legs uh, End pieces. Well, the end to this out. You could, yeah. 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 The way I do it, I put glue in and drive the pins in and then cut the pins off. So. I would do it at the same time. You know, I'd glue the two ends together and then go right ahead and continue my assembly. Um, so what you want to do is get everything together. Um, and then, you know, since these are flexible, you'd want to check. I, I would check my diagonals and, you know, get them the way you want them. Because, you know, there's a possibility things, things can wiggle around a little bit. But generally, I mean, when I have these draw pins and you drive the pins in, that, that's... It's going to be in the right spot. You know, this thing's floating, so this may not end up being dead center, but it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't. It literally doesn't matter. There's no. Uh, there's no way to check. I mean, yeah, you can check it with a tape, but there's, there's. It's not critical. First of all, it's not going to be off by much at all. You know, and secondly, you can't. Visually, you can't tell. So. It, if you can't tell something visually and it doesn't affect it structurally, in my mind, it doesn't matter. It looks good, it is good. Exactly. So then what I did, so let's pretend that this thing's all glued up nice and tight, right? Um, so then you can go and you take your piece that's going to be your gadruning. You've got two of them. They overlap. But what I did was I got my table so I know that these distances are correct. And then you slide each gadruning piece under the leg. And I had some corresponding thickness pieces over here so it wouldn't rock. So you set your gadruning on here. And what I did was, it's coming back to me here. The gadruning 
the width of it is your 5 sixteenths plus a quarter on each side, which is 13 sixteenths. Um, and so what I did was I took a marking gauge and I marked the width of my stretchers onto my gadruning piece. This, is, this isn't one. This is just a mock-up, right? So let's say that's my stretcher width. What you do is when you set this up, you line it up with your chamfer, right, on the inside of your leg. So you line that, those marks up with your chamfer so your piece is going to be centered underneath your stretchers, right? And so then what I did was, and this is just a mock-up, so I'm going to use a pencil in this case, but you take this thing, you set it up the way you want it, and you mark it from your leg. And again, keep track of which leg you marked it to. What I did was I put A and B on my drawing, and I always faced my table the same way, and I would put A and B on my, on my stretcher parts so that I could always put them back in the same spot.